So omega-3 is the is sort of the last micronutrient that I want to cover before getting into the next part of my talk. And um, omega-3, there's three forms of it. So there's ALA, which is found in plant forms like flaxseed, walnuts. There's EPA and DHA, which are marine sources. So they're found in seafood. And um, there's a study out of Harvard that was published, gosh, it was like 2009. And this study identified the top six preventable causes of death. So these are, these are things that are, you know, lifestyle related. So hypertension, for example, smoking, of like not having, you know, avoiding hypertension, avoiding smoking. Those were, those were one of the, you know, some of the top six preventable causes of death. Well, omega-3, not getting enough omega-3 from seafood. So this was the marine source of omega-3, EPA and DHA, was in that top six. And, um, Researchers from Harvard had identified that not getting enough omega-3 from seafood was responsible for about 84,000 deaths a year. And that was compared to trans fats. So trans fats were also, in, consuming trans, trans fats were uh, one of the top avoidable, um, you know, preventable causes of death. Well, tra eating trans fats were responsible for 82,000 deaths per year, pretty much the same as not getting enough omega-3 from seafood. And, you know, what's funny is that, you know, everybody knows about trans fats. You walk into any supermarket, any grocery store, everything's marketed. Oh, zero trans fats, zero trans fats. But nobody's thinking about they're not getting enough omega-3. They're not eating enough seafood or fish or taking uh, microalgae or, or, you know, fish oil supplement to get omega-3. And so I, I just kind of like to highlight that because it's, it's, it's again, I think that the way thinking about food in that, you know, what are we, what do we need to feed our, our body, our metabolism? We need cofactors, magnesium, you know, vitamin D, omega-3. Like these are things, if we focus on what we need to consume, we don't end up eating all the other stuff. And so, you know, people so, sort of get fixated on what to avoid and don't think about what they're actually supposed to be taking in, what they're supposed to be eating. So the omega-3 index is one of the best measures of omega-3. So this was pioneered by um, Dr. Bill Harris and uh, his colleague Von Shackey many years ago, back in 2004. And um, it's measuring omega-3 levels in red blood cell membranes as opposed to plasma phospholipids. And the reason for that is because it is a long-term biomarker of omega-3. So your red blood cells take about 120 days to turn over. Whereas your plasma phospholipids, it's more like if you, you get your omega-3 levels measured and it's plasma phosph phospholipids, it's more like what did I eat, you know, the past week or, you know, something like that. So um, it, it's kind of a comparison is, you know, fasting blood glucose would be the immediate, you know, biomarker. And then the HbA1c, right, is your long-term blood glucose level. So it's sort of similar here. So omega-3 index is a really important way to measure omega-3, and um, it's now being increasingly used in many scientific studies. Of course, many, I think a lot of conflicting data out there also has to do with the fact that plasma phospholipids were measured. And again, it goes down to this, well, was it just that they didn't eat omega-3 in the last week, or they did, and so we're saying they have high omega-3 because of that just recent dietary um, choice, right? So. Omega-3 index was, um, this is again from Bill Harris's group, he found, him and his colleagues found that people with a high omega-3 index, which is defined as 8%, at least 8%, had a 90% reduced risk of sudden cardiac death compared to people with a low omega-3 index of 4%. Um, the standard, in, in the US, the omega-3 index, most people, it's about, it's less than 5%, so it's about 4%. So most people in the United States are, are at a, a very low omega-3 index. They don't eat enough seafood and fish. Um, you know, so sudden cardiac death is reduced by 90% if you're in that high, high omega-3 index group. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in the United States and, uh, and actually in most all developed countries. Every 33 seconds, someone dies of a heart attack. So um, anything you can do to improve cardiovascular health is really, really on your side in terms of improving health span, improving your lifespan. High omega the high omega-3 index, also from Bill Harris's group, found that people, again, with an 8% omega-3 index had a five-year increased life expectancy compared to people with a 4% omega-3 index. So that was the low end. And um, it's interesting because in Japan, 
their life expectancy on average is about five years longer than uh, in, the, in the United States. Our average life expectancy is five years less here than in Japan. And they happen to have an omega-3 index in general above 8%, whereas, again, I mentioned we're below 5%. So um, sort of an interesting sort of observation that also correlates with the increased average life expectancy in a country that eats a lot of seafood. But this is what really, I think, is almost it's just eye-opening. Um, it's part of the same study from Bill Harris's group where they stratified these participants and looked at their omega-3 index and then also look at their smoking. So the very, very top curve, the green curve, people lived the longest if they had the 8% omega-3 index and they were non-smokers. And the very, very bottom curve, the red one, was people that were smokers and had a low omega-3 index, 4%. So those, the, they had the, the lowest life expectancy. But this is what blows my mind. If you look at the orange and blue curves, they're, I, they're completely overlaid on top of each other. So people that had a high omega-3 index but smoked had the same life expectancy as people that didn't smoke but had a low omega-3 index. So essentially, if you just look at this data alone, smoking was like having a low omega-3 index. And it just, again, it's one of those things where, of course, it's observational data and you can never really establish causation. But I just feel like that's really eye-opening um, because, again, everyone knows smoking is bad for you, but nobody's thinking about how we're not getting enough omega-3 and how easy is it to take a, a fish oil supplement, for example, or increase your you know, salmon intake. So to summarize this part of my talk with respect to micronutrients, we talked about vitamin D, low-hanging fruit, um, as, as simple as a supplement, 4,000 I use a day is a pretty good start to get most people who are deficient to a sufficient level. That's been shown in several studies. Getting people from a you know, deficient level up to a sufficient level can be done with 4,000 IUs of vitamin D a day. Omega-3 fatty acids. Um, omega-3 index, um, getting the omega-3 index test, you want your levels to be in the 8%. You want to be high. Um, and then there's been studies showing that it takes around two grams of supplemental omega-3 to get from a 4% omega-3 index to an 8%. It's really not that hard. And then, um, again, um, omega-3 is, is found in prescription form. I didn't go into all the randomized controlled trials today because that would take the remainder of my, my time here. But um, you can get omega-3 in purified ethyl ester form, either in the form of EPA only, Vesipa, or DHA plus EPA, uh, Loveza. And those are prescribed in four grams a day per dose. And so what I said was, you know, sort of conservative. It takes about two grams a day just to get from a 4% on average, 4% omega-3 index to an 8%. And again, it's as simple as getting the test done and, and, you know, supplementing and then testing again and seeing if you're getting your, your index up to 8%. And then magnesium, we talked about, uh, you know, getting, getting that RDA, hitting it um, with either, you know, increasing or a combination, ideally, increasing leafy greens, and also taking a supplement, magnesium glycinate, citrate, malate are all pretty bioavailable sources of magnesium.